What's going on you guys? Theo here with the big review back yet again with another King of Fighters All-Star video. It's Saturday so we are going to be doing our Saturday chat and chill. However, it's going to be a little bit different from our usual because we're just going to be covering some news bits that we weren't able to cover throughout the rest of the week. So before we do, smash that like button and subscribe. So first and foremost, I want to go over the dev note that was released yesterday. This dev note pretty much covered several different topics and I'm sure you guys are well versed on it by now. But for those of you who are not, basically they told us that on 419 they are going to be peeling back this update so that they can fix the game and they are also going to be compensating us with compensation that should have already been in your mailbox in the form of five total multis for the seven deadly sins volume one banner and then also they announced that Merlin will be getting her hyper armor back so basically three points there and we'll go over them one by one first and foremost waiting until the 19th which is well after the seven deadly sins update in order to peel this stuff back and get it fixed i am in firm disagreement with i feel like this is probably a really bad move i had talked about in my rant video which for those of you who did not see that link will be in the description but I talked about in there the fact that there was a good chance that they might drag their feet on this for several weeks at a time because they hadn't really given us a clear idea on what was going on and here we are lo and behold they have decided they're going to drag their feet and it really does not behoove them to do so especially considering the fact that collaborations are pretty much the biggest events that they have going 99% of the time. They are the events that the most people look forward to and they're also the events that are relied upon to bring in the most set of new eyes so I really feel like this is a botch and a really bad idea now granted the level of issues that people might have are going to be dependent upon a lot of times the device that they're on so for those of you who are on things like new iPhones and so on and so forth you may not notice these as much but at the same time for a lot of players especially the one thing I fear the most is new players that are downloading the game for the first time while some of this stuff they may not notice because they don't have a frame of reference I feel like a lot of it is bad enough to where it'll at least make the game feel clunky and it just worries me it, that's all I'm going to say about it it just worries me I think it's a bad idea to wait this long and I really don't see the reasoning I think that they need to get this done sooner than later but hey I don't design the game so what is what it is as far as the compensation goes there's been a lot of chatter about that I personally I'm sure you guys already know my opinion while it is better than a bunch of random in-game items that would have been kind of just throwaway things you know five total multis is generous however I feel like they really should have just gone the extra mile for those of us who have already summoned on this banner and already got what we want and just given rubies to everyone so that way they appeased everybody because as it sits now, just giving out tickets for summons, while again, is appreciated and is nice, it is not good enough in my opinion. I feel like it really needed to be four to 5,000 rubies, basically the equivalent in rubies to what they gave us to make this worthwhile. And I just, I don't see it. I just feel like for a lot of players, it's gonna be too little because they had already summoned, like I said, and it just isn't going to be something where I feel like the value is there. But again, it is appreciated. I'm not going to say it's not. It's better than giving us a bunch of junk. But again, it's going to be varying degrees of appreciated depending on the player and where they're at as far as this collaboration goes. So the next part of this entire thing that I suppose that I should talk about is going to be the Merlin situation. Merlin's getting her hyper armor back. And for those of you who are paying attention to what's going on in the background here, uh, if you can't tell, I am very happy with where Merlin's at right now currently. I am happy to see she's getting her hyper armor back. I'm really hoping that this bleeds over to this next banner and they decide not to tinker at all with these other characters. Because I know a lot of people are really looking forward to some of these characters on the second run. So let's hope that this has gotten them gun shy on making any further changes to any of these kits because Lord knows we don't need to be going through all of this again. But it is really nice to see her getting her hyper armor back. Now granted, I know a lot of people feel like she absolutely 100% needs it, and that may definitely be the case in PvP. In PvE, I don't necessarily think that's the case. I think that with the way she is built right now, she's actually quite strong. She's really, really good. I'll be bringing you guys my full thoughts on her in a separate video, but as I'm trying to learn her kit, so on and so forth. But yeah, she is going to be quite the player, I feel like. Like if you have not already gotten her you should definitely do so 
But yeah, guys, that is pretty much that dev note, my opinions on it. Like I said, I don't feel like it's adequate, but hey, you know what? I don't design the game again. I can't control what's going on. So the next thing I wanted to kind of cover is going to be some of these new data mines. Now, these are thanks to Xenon Kusanagi, and I had also had these brought to my attention by Steven as well. So I'm going to go ahead and show these to you guys because Xenon went ahead and put these on a fancy little layout, and that way you can kind of look at them in an organized fashion. But basically the idea here, it seems like, is Netmarble is going to be introducing at some point. We don't have any release date on anything. We don't have any ideas. These are just things in the data right now. Now, it looks like they are going to be bringing us R stones, and these R stones are going to be themed towards specific move types. So, for instance, blast skill only, going to be things like that. And really, with that, I feel like those could be really good depending on how they implement them. Now, they're going to be very niche, only specific characters are really going to be able to get the most out of these if they're for specific types of attacks which it appears as if they are just based on what we're seeing with this data mine. So for instance, you know, to keep it topical, Merlin is going to be a character based around blast skills. So if there are R stones that are introduced that are extremely powerful, that are going to be for blast skills only, I could definitely see her benefiting greatly from that, especially considering the fact that while the Seven Deadly Sins stones themselves are pretty good, they aren't necessarily as strong as some stones that we've seen in the past because they are kind of handicapped by specific things such as the power charge that you get on the third one only being good while in an awakened state and so on and so forth. So there's quite a bit of potential there for specific fighters, but I really don't see it as anything unless they're absolutely just just busted as all get out that's going to kind of tip the scales necessarily in such a way to where it's going to be that big of a deal. Now there's been a lot of talk in the past and it's very true and very warranted that stones are kind of the biggest divide between who is a whale and who is free to play and I can agree with that to a extent. You know with stones they do tend to be the most kind of pay to play aspect of the game at least at this point in my opinion because they are things that are going to be premium and very tough for a lot of players to get a hold of especially ones that are going to be specific to the fighters they may have or they may want them for and then you aren't even taking into consideration what you have to do in order to build those up because in order to do so you need gold hammers and so on which tend to be premium items in and of themselves for the most part which kind of again it donates to more of a pay to play aspect with the stones so we'll have to wait and see the other part of that data mine is going to show us some new items that look like they're just going to buff drop rates in specific modes which we had seen this kind of start already with an in-game shop item that was introduced with this update so we'll have to wait and see how they implement those if those are just going to be things that they're starting to add into packs that people get I don't really see them being anything majorly important but then again implementation really is the key there so Overall, that is going to be the data mines for now. Now we do also have a better look now at the SS tokens for the memories as well as the BS memories. So basically it's just the token images for those and there's really not a whole lot new there. It's just kind of a better, higher resolution look at them. There's still no information on when these are going to be introduced into the game at this point. We know that they are planning on doing so. We have no idea how they're planning on implementing it. At this point, they're kind of walking on eggshells with how they've kind of been doing things the past week or two. So my, uh, my best advice to them at this point be very, very cautious on how you do this because you could very well piss some people off yet again, and I don't know how often you can get away with that before it starts to really bite you in the butt. But, you know, it is what it is. I mean, they're going to netmarble going to netmarble. They're going to do what they're going to do, but we'll have to wait and see. I've talked about my opinions on these memories in the past about how I really feel like they need to make these as accessible as possible to a wide range of players and not make these pay to play, not make these things that are locked and gated behind packs that you have to buy, so on and so forth, because there are a lot of people out there that that would really upset, especially if they were to implement a VIP system, and then at that point it would just be it would be just an absolute train wreck, an absolute mess. 
So let's hope that this means one, that we are getting closer to these being introduced into the game formally, and then also two, that they do not mess it up because they really need to make sure that they do these right because if they're planning on making these characters the best types of characters they introduce in the future as it seems like they are, they need to make sure that they make these memories accessible after the fact especially considering the fact that they aren't planning on reintroducing them very often. So we know we're going to be eventually getting the BS banner with BS Omega Rugal and BS Orochi at some point this year, but we don't again have any type of release date on that at all. So that's pretty much going to be catching up on all the news this week, guys. Sorry I wasn't able to get to some of this before, but the collab just took up all my time. Now that's going to be the end of the KOF All-Star News because I want to get into this King KOF 15 trailer, so let's check it out. You guys have no idea how excited I was when this trailer dropped. I was expecting to see this be one of the last character reveals, so I'm so glad we got it early, but this first and foremost is going to be an homage to the Art of Fighting 2 background stage for King, which is very cool, including the music. Now, King herself looks fantastic. They didn't change a whole lot as far as her character design goes, and honestly, she's one of those characters where they're better off just leaving her alone for the most part and just making small tweaks, which it looks like they did here and there, but overall, very cool to see that Harumi Akoma is back for her voice actress. Now, Harumi has been pretty much around since day one for King. She has been her voice actress in most all of the games and it's really cool to see that because you don't see voice actors or actresses stick around that long typically now that kick right there is a returning move that is something she did not have in KOF 14 so they did mention from the developers that she will be seeing some of her old skills return in this game so it's very nice to see again there's that heel kick and it does jump over low projectiles as you saw there against Iori which is very cool that looks like a rival in Intro, it seems like, which we do get a better look at some of the rival intros throughout this trailer. But overall, with this iteration of King, she is looking very, very classy, very, very classic, very close to her roots. I don't see a whole lot of changes outside of maybe a little bit of changes with some cufflinks here or there and things like that. But overall, they decided to stick very close to her classic design. And her skills are going to be pretty much what you've learned to expect as we see there, her tornado kick. But Overall, this is going to be another rival cutscene. It does look like that they have tried to shine a little bit more of a light on her more feminine qualities, if we'll, if we can just put it that way. Um, but yeah, so that's one thing I did notice that they did. Now, looking at it there, there's her double Venom strike. It looks like the first one cancels out Joe's tornado, and then the second one connects. Got another taunt there, as we've seen before. Taunts are making their return, and there again is that forward heel kick, that forward B, which should be a very nice nice boon to her kit. I think that King is definitely going to be a character a lot of people are going to be picking. Just judging from what I see in this trailer, she looks like she is going to be very, very strong in this game. But of course, time will tell. We'll have a better outlook on that once we get more looks at some of these characters and who's included on the roster. Now, one thing a lot of people have pointed out is auto combos are clearly back. We see that in this trailer. And those are a subject of contention for a lot of people, as we're seeing. So, you know, my opinion on auto combos combos is they're fine as long as they don't include things such as finishers because if you do that then 
it tends to get a little cheesy so and then for veterans and things who don't want to use those that you can obviously just turn those off in the settings so you don't have to use them it's mainly to be designed for it to be something to where it's easier for new players to access the game and get into it and learn these combos and things so I, i'm fine with it i don't have to use it so it's nice that it's there for new players so it's more inclusive to new players getting into the game but that's the trailer guys i'm so excited for this you guys have no idea this has been my favorite character in snk history since day one and i'm just happy to see her so that's going to be the video today guys i hope you all enjoyed it like share and subscribe i'll see you in the next one enjoy your weekend peace Continue.